All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is finally time to make a video addressing the Yammy Noob scam drama. Now, as soon as I said that, I'm sure lots of you guys already know exactly which video I'm talking about, but for those of you who don't, let me fill you in. Essentially, about two weeks ago, Yammy Noob made a video targeting NBT Clothing, Winx, and a couple other motorcycle pant companies, and his main claim was that they're all just cheap Chinese knockoffs that aren't designed to protect you because they're not CE abrasion rated, and all of these pant companies are just influencer marketing-based companies that use influencers who just want a check to put push these pants to their audience while not actually caring about their safety at all. As soon as this video came out, I started getting a decent amount of questions from all of you guys, and for good reason. For one thing, in the intro of that video, you can actually see that he used a clip from one of the ads that I've made for NBT Clothing, called NBT Clothing, albeit it was a clip that he used from one of my ads about their riding jackets. You probably wouldn't believe it unless I showed you, but this flannel and this hoodie are both actually protective motorcycle riding jackets that have full armor and slide protection built in. And not the pants, so not sure where he was going with that. Secondly, this time last year, I was actually in Bike Week with Yammy Noob and a couple of other YouTubers. So you guys know that I've actually spent some time with him. And thirdly, I just got back from this year's bike week where I was actually staying with the owner of NBT Clothing, Nick. So understandably, I was kind of one of the main people that you guys came to with your questions about the video. And honestly, I wasn't going to address it. I didn't really want to get involved. I just wanted to let you guys make your own decisions. But seeing some of the comments that have come up from that video, it seems that more people took the uh, sheep route as opposed to thinking for yourself route. Get it? Do you understand the influence for why I stopped here to make this video? So I wanted to take this time to just kind of address the claims in his video and kind of give you guys my side of things. And uh, like I said, I just spent the past week with Nick and a few other people from NBT and I got kind of like a behind the scenes look at things. And I'll just say that they didn't have me sign an NDA. So I'm going to say some things that maybe they don't want me to. Maybe it will upset some people. But like I said, it's all about giving you guys all the facts possible so that you don't end up as sheep and you can actually make informed decisions. Welcome back to Life of Birch. If you're new here, my name is Birch. Let's jump straight into things. Now, I'm sure that uh, the fact that I just said that I've worked with NBT before and uh, the fact that I just got done at Bike Week with the owner of NBT is going to make some of you guys skeptical about what I have to say and you're immediately watching the video thinking that I'm biased. And it probably doesn't help that I've been a little bit vocal before about the fact that I don't like Yammy Noob at all. I think it's super sh the fact that he, uh, if you don't know, fired his best friend in a video and posted that video to YouTube and then took it down after he got backlash. He made a video out of it? Ooh. Yeah, the news for today's video is that Spite is leaving the channel. Um, the floor is kind of yours, I think, for this segment. Um, I guess you oh. can tell people what you did here, because I- I'll Oh, they can't look each other in the eyes. Oh, is anybody else noticing this? They can't look each other in the eyes. I will have to find, you know, another form of work to keep the lights on. I think that really showed the kind of person that he is, and I just lost all respect for him in that moment. So I'm sure you guys will think that this video is very biased, given the fact that I don't like him at all, and the fact that I work with NBT, but that's good. I want you guys to be skeptical of what I say. I want you guys to be skeptical of what he says. I want you to be able to take facts from both sides and form your own opinion, and if you want to rock the pants afterwards, and do it. And if you don't, then don't. I'm also going to try and be as factual as possible, and uh, not put my feelings into it. Uh, I did see some really good facts from Yemi Noob in that video, honestly, but I also saw some stuff that seemed kind of emotion driven or I guess is the word hypocritical? No, contradictory. That's what I'm trying to say. For example, in the video, he spends the whole time saying that NBT and these other companies are direct uh, copycats of Ugly Bros. This NBT design is a knockoff. And how do I know these NBT pants are knockoffs? because Ugly Bros is selling these pairs of pants. From experience, the design between the NBT pant and the Ugly Bro pants are super similar. And uses that as a way to say that NBT and these other companies are not protective at all. The garment itself is not CE approved, tested, or certified, and how could it be? It's literally just cotton and spandex. Even a low speed slide is gonna shred this 97% cotton and 3% spandex. 
like that. But then ends the video recommending Ugly Bros and says something along the lines of, I'm pretty sure that they'll definitely protect you. And if you really love the look of the NBT pants or the Winx pants, go with the Ugly Bros. They're not CE approved for abrasion resistance, which is a bit of a bummer, but at least they're the original and I think they're definitely going to keep you protected. So if you're pretty sure that Ugly Bros will definitely protect us, then why is it that the other ones that you say are direct copycats wouldn't? And then at the beginning of the video, he talks to us about what CE rating is and like pretty much teaches us how to read CE rating. The only markings I see on these pants is this small motorcycle logo here, HK and type B which is telling me that this is a hip and knee insert for impact protection and type B, which is normal. But then when he gets to one of the knockoff pants, he shows the knee armor and goes, I don't even think these are CE rated while he's holding the CE rating towards the camera. And I'm not even sure that these knee protectors are actually CE rated. These are the cheapest looking things I've ever seen. Not to mention the fact that in the video he kept repeating over and over again the fact that these pants are 97% cotton and 3% spandex. 97% cotton and 3% spandex. Literally just cotton and spandex. 97% cotton and 3% spandex. 97% cotton, 3% spandex. 97% cotton, 3% spandex. These pants will probably not protect you in any way, shape, or form when you're out there riding on your motorcycle because they're also 97% cotton and 3% spandex. And says that like a, like a trigger word. I think he even called them fashion leathers or something. Basically just fashion leather. But he kept repeating the fact that they're just cotton and spandex, not realizing that that is what denim is. Denim is cotton. So I feel like he used lots of kind of like, I don't want to say trigger words, but lots of like scary sounding stuff to make the pants sound worse than they are. All right, so first things first, let's go ahead and address his first claim that these are all just cheap Chinese Chinese knockoffs of the original and uh, I will say that the evidence is pretty damning the design is very very similar if not the exact same on all of these pants and uh, while I agree that does look pretty bad I do have some thoughts on it and the main thing is that uh, a knockoff is not always a bad thing or something that automatically makes something bad you know like just because you're the first doesn't mean that you're the best for example I have a Honda Grom that I love 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 of, but I also ride with people who have a Kawasaki Z125 and I also know people who have the CF Moto Papio and there's also lots of people who love just like the Amazon Grom clones. At the end of the day they are all knockoffs of each other it's just people choose one or the other for one reason or another. Just because something is a knockoff doesn't mean that it's bad in my opinion. The same way that just because something is from China doesn't mean that it's cheap. So much stuff comes from China. Damn I've had my turn signal on this whole time. So much stuff comes from China. For example, the uh, Saint pants that he recommends in the video. You could even get a pair of Saint Unbreakable AA CE rated pants. I know somebody who has three pairs of Saint pants and one of them was made in China. Just because something is made in China doesn't make it bad, especially for, you know, the fact that NBT has only been a company for less than three years. It's just a fact that manufacturing things in China costs less money. Doesn't make it any worse, it just costs less money. And for a company as new as them or any of these other companies mentioned, sometimes you have to start out making things as cheaply as possible so you can make that money and reinvest it and make better products. And I will say that behind the scenes watching like what's going on at NBT, they are actively trying already to get their product out of China and to be made somewhere else. So for example, if any of you guys have any of the new NBT stuff, you might see that the old stuff says made in China. The new stuff, most of it says made in Pakistan. They are already actively trying to move out of China and I don't don't know if I'm supposed to be saying that. Maybe it's an insider secret, so sorry about that. But like I said, I didn't sign an NDA. And also the pants that Yami Noob reviewed are not even pants that are offered by NBT anymore. They do still have some, but they're trying to push them out because all of their pants now, all of their everything has Aramid in it. So the pants that he reviewed, it's not really fair that he, uh, that he was comparing these pants to, what am I trying to say? The pants that he got at the time were $150. I looked at his order personally and he didn't use a discount code, but if he did, which they're always available on the website, for 15% off, he would have gotten it for $128. So comparing a $128 pair of pants to these $250, $300 pants that he's saying are better, of course there's going to be less protection in them. And again, basically the same price as these influencer pants. That was a lot. 
but like I said, those were also the old pants and they're pushing towards pants that have more protection in them. So all of their pants have aramid lining now in the knees and the butt. Their newest pants that they came out with has even more aramid coverage than before. And it's all just stuff that as you grow as a company, you're gonna come out with better and better products. So it's not, I don't know, it was kind of a bad look to review some of the first pants they came out with. And you know, he recommended pants from Revit and uh, Saint and everything like that. And these are all companies that are well established. They've been around for over a decade. So of course their pants are gonna be better quality. They're a bigger company and they've already had 10 years of kind of R&D to get down what a good pant is. And just because you start out with a product that isn't necessarily superior to everything else on the market as a new company, that doesn't mean that you can't grow after that. And you can actively see that NBT especially, I can't speak for these other companies, but they are growing and pushing and uh, I don't know. I guess I'll say it now. I don't know if I'm supposed to say this, but they are working on a double A abrasion rated pant and uh, they plan to put that out next year. Um, it just has not been going as expected because when you do a double A rating, the pant ends up being, you know, it's harder to have them stretch the way that they need to and be as comfortable as they're looking to have them. And it's just, you know, quality concerns. And uh, like I said, as a new company, you're kind of learning and growing as you go as to how to get that quality where you want it to be while still having the price where you want it to be, et cetera, et cetera. And now while we're on the topic of the CE rating, uh, I think that was his biggest thing that he was saying in his video as to why these pants weren't up to snuff and why they aren't protective at all because they don't have the CE abrasion rating. Not CE approved, tested, or certified. And how could it be? It's literally just cotton and spandex. I have mixed thoughts on that. I think that it would be really great if they were CE rated, but but at the same time, I feel like I am kind of a case study in why NBT works. NBT did not reach out to me and say, hey, we're gonna pay you money to wear these pants the way that he's making it seem like influencers, you know, interact with companies. It was actually a little bit less than two years ago. I was getting flamed by my subscribers, always bitching at me because I didn't wear gear. I would be doing all this hooligan stuff and I'd be in a t-shirt and regular jeans or shorts or whatever. And they'd always be yelling at me about wearing gear, but I never wore gear because I was part of the team that was like, dude, I'm more comfortable if I'm not restricted by gear and I can move around however I need to and move the bike however I need to. And if I'm that comfortable, I'm safer being able to do that than I am like in this uncomfortable gear that doesn't stretch. And I had a leather jacket where I could barely move my arms. So I was just team, I'm not gonna wear gear. But after getting flamed for a while, oh, there they are. I didn't think the horses were out, but we got two little mini horses. For and love these things. But after getting flamed for long enough and realizing, you know what, maybe these people are right. They just have my best interest in mind and I do have more of an influence than I think. And there's kids watching me that are gonna go out and get on a bike without gear. I'm like, all right, what gear can I find that doesn't feel like gear? And I found NBT and I reached out to them and was like, hey, like, here's what I got going on. I love what you're doing. It seems like the only stuff that will really work for me. They sent me some stuff and the rest is history. I loved it. If you watch my channel, you know that there, I don't work with a lot of companies. I only support companies I truly believe in. So the fact that I'm kind of a case study and the fact that NBT gets gear on more people, I think is kind of like my, it's it's always been my biggest takeaway. They both look great. They're both priced great. And honestly, I love what NBT is doing, making casual protective riding gear that appeals to an audience like me who might not wear riding gear otherwise. Is their stuff, especially their first stuff, quite as protective as some of the other stuff out there? No. But but is it so much more comfortable that I actually end up wearing it whereas the other stuff sits on the shelf? Yes, and I'm not just saying that. And honestly, I don't even think that NBT is really, you know, going after or geared towards the same market as these other pants that he's talking about. In my ad, I was talking about for the jackets, I was saying I love the fact that NBT is appealing to people who wouldn't normally wear gear. And that's exactly who I was and exactly what I saw at Bike Week this year. Wearing gear is not cool. And you can disagree with me all you want, but I'm telling you as like a dude in his 20s or early 30s, wearing gear is not cool. You look like a 
safety, or at least that's what you think, and you think you're indestructible and you don't need to wear gear. You're not on Revzilla looking up the most protective gear that you can wear. It doesn't matter. Like, yeah, I get it. You're comparing casual riding gear to casual riding gear, stuff that just looks like jeans. But the rider that NBT is targeting is not on Revzilla looking up leather jackets or mesh jackets or double A rated pants. They're looking and seeing, damn, I'm on Instagram and everybody is wearing these pants. My favorite stunt rider is wearing these pants. Maybe I should get some. And even if it's the old pants that are not CE rated, I wore those pants all the time and I had the armor in them the whole time. Whether they're CE rated or not, I can tell you the denim was thicker than my regular Levi's and my regular Levi's did not have hip protectors or knee protectors. So again, are they as protective as the pants that he's recommending that are double A rated and blah blah blah? No, but otherwise I wouldn't have had any protection. So even if it's the gateway drug of protection, that's freaking awesome. You know, we were at bike week and there were, we were at a bunch of stunt shows like Harley stunt shows and everything. And all these people were coming up so stoked to meet Nick. Dude, I see what you're doing online, getting like this cool riding gear on people. I love it. And these are people who would typically never wear gear. And now they are because they see their favorite influencers wearing it. So when you talk about influencer marketing, it's like, okay, for one thing, that's just how marketing is now. You can't hate on a company like NBT for doing a lot of influencer marketing when that's just how marketing works now. You know, like when Revit started however long ago, 10, 20 years ago, would you have gotten mad at them because they were spending more money on like Google SEO searches than anybody else? It's just that is kind of like the playing field that we're at now. Influencer marketing is the new SEO, is the new advertising on Revzilla, you know? And on the topic of the influencer marketing stuff, let me just say that he uses influencer marketing as like this big scary word. You should buy real riding pants from real companies and not from random influencers. And says, nobody's paying me to talk about these pants. Now, Revit didn't pay me to say anything, but these are just the pants that I personally wear. But all of the stuff that he recommended was affiliate links. And he wants to talk about affiliate marketing or uh, influencer marketing. It's like, bro, you have 1.3 million followers and I have 70,000. His reach is bigger than everybody that works with NBT combined. You're going to make more money off of those affiliate links than NBT will spend in their ad share for the entire first quarter, you know? Which is, I don't know, it just feels kind of like shady to me that, uh, you know, one of his big things is, oh, it's, it's all influencer influencer driven pants and they're getting paid when he's a bigger influencer than we are and he's getting paid more than we are you know it's just he's not working directly with the company he's working with a platform where as soon as you click on his link anything that you buy from that website he's getting commission on so I don't know I feel like I had more points to talk about um, I actually made kind of a list when I watched the video of like stuff to talk about but it's just I'm kind of trying to go off the top of my head and be as genuine as possible Possible. Um, it definitely does look bad, the video that he made, but it's a little bit different when I know that it's pants that they don't even offer anymore, that they're trying to phase out as quickly as possible to already make more protective pants. And it's stuff where like he talks about how much better the stitching is in Ugly Bros or one of the other pant companies, but then when he shows the stitching, it's their air mid pants. When you put the Ugly Bros pants side by side with the NBT pants, it becomes painfully obvious that these are knockoffs of this design. Look at the difference in the stitching between these two. The overall quality of the materials, it's night and day between them. The stitching on the NBT Aramid pants is just as clean as what you're showing, but you're comparing this company's Aramid pants to NBT's not Aramid pants. So I don't know, lots of it just feels kind of deceptive, but... All right, my camera died at some point. I'm not exactly sure when it was, but I don't think it really matters because I was at the stage of the video where I was just rambling anyway. At the end of the day, I don't really give a f whether you guys side with me or you side with Yami Noob. I think at the end of the day, the most important thing is that you guys take the facts from each of our videos and make your own decision. And whether you choose Revit or you choose NBT, I think the most important thing is just finding whatever riding gear works for you and whatever you're most comfortable in and just wearing it. I don't give a f if you believe me, if you believe him, what you wear, just wear riding gear, make good decisions, and stay safe. And if this video convinced you that maybe NBT is for you, that's great. Go buy some and use a discount code, but because he wants to talk about influencer marketing, I don't want to make any money off of it. I don't give a f
I'm not even going to show you my code. Use Jixer Bra's code right here so that he makes a little bit of money to go towards his lawyer bills, which we all know he's going to need. And uh, yeah, hopefully this doesn't start more drama. I'm just trying to let you guys know how I feel. I don't, I'm getting too old, dude. I don't have time for drama. I just wanted to fill you guys in on my thoughts. All right. Well, love you guys. Peace. Oh, so basic. Hope you play this. Damn, I prayed it. Nice song, yeah. I be Candace, all souls fake it, pay those ay, placements, ay, fuck ay. And I'm still waiting on the brighter days Been a minute, been rough many times more And I'm kicking rocks to a sky of gray Praying hard, talk to me for I'm done for